Nvidia's GeForce RTX 30 series offers a considerable increase in performance compared to the RTX 20 series, and rumors say that we could be seeing a similar rise in performance from the next generation RTX 40 series, which is currently being developed behind closed doors at Nvidia's HQ. The RTX 40 series from Nvidia will provide performance twice as fast as the RTX 30 series, and its release date may come much sooner than originally anticipated. Here's all that we know so far. According to Nvidia's regular release schedule, we anticipate the cards to become available this fall. Cards in the RTX 20 series were released in September 2018, while cards in the RTX 30 series were released in September of 2020. However, there are rumblings that the RTX 4080 could arrive much sooner than expected. Recent indications indicate that the launch will take place in the latter part of the summer, possibly around the beginning of August. The report that NVIDIA will debut the RTX 4090 in August followed by the 4080 in September and the 4070 in October is the most specific piece of information we have regarding dates to this point. In April, a prominent leaker known as Copite 7 Kimmy stated the final testing for the RTX 4090 had already begun. We won't have to wait long to find out if that is true. There haven't been many hints from NVIDIA about when the RTX 40 series cards will be released, but there's a fair probability that we'll see them around the late summer or early fall. And even if that window does close, we strongly expect the cards to arrive before the end of the year. We currently do not have any information regarding the cost of the RTX 40 series, but when transitioning from the 20 series to the 30 series, there wasn't much of a difference in prices. This time around, the possibility is that it could go up by a very small amount. Nvidia increased their price by $100 when they, trans when they transitioned from the GTX 1080 to the RTX 2080. When RTX 40 series cards finally become available, we are hoping that won't be the case. So what is the architecture of the RTX 40 series cards? The same leaker who revealed the new release date also divulged information indicating that the RTX 40 series graphic cards will be manufactured on TSMC's N5 node. This adds credence to the speculation that NVIDIA will manufacture its chips on a 5 nanometer node, which makes perfect sense. Currently, the graphics cards from NVIDIA's RTX 30 series are manufactured with Samsung's 8 nanometer technology, while those from AMD's RX 6000 series are manufactured with TSMC's 7 nanometer processors. This rumor was confirmed by a report published by Dig Times, which cited anonymous industry insiders as saying that Nvidia will co collaborate with TSMC and use the N5 node. Another possibility is that Nvidia may decide to go with the 4 nanometer process. Moore's Law is Dead, a prolific leaker, confirmed in April of 2022 via tweet Lovelace is certainly 4 nanometers. WCCF Tech, on the other hand, has asserted that this is actually talking about TSMC's 4 nanometer node, which is a 5 nanometer process. Even while Nvidia hasn't commented on the matter, all indications point to the company working with TSMC as its manufacturing partner for the next generation of graphic processing units. Because Nvidia's manufacturing process is more compact, the company can fit more cores onto a single GPU die. It has been speculated that the new die will have the capacity to house 18,432 CD CUDA cores, which has been an increase of about 8,000 over what the RTX 3090 currently offers. This is a significant increase, which hints that RTX 40 series graphic cards might achieve the same performance growth as the RTX 30 series ones. It has been rumored that Nvidia's RTX 40 series graphic cards would use a monolithic design, while AMD's upcoming GPUs are rumored to use multi-chip module. According to speculations, Nvidia will move to an MCM design with its Hopper graphics cards, which are scheduled to launch after Lovelace. Although we have not received any information regarding ray tracing or tensor cores, it is reasonable to anticipate that these will be included in Lovelace. Real-time ray tracing is taken care of by RT cores, while the tensor cores are in charge of doing the artificial intelligence computations necessary for NVIDIA's deep learning super sampling, DLSS. These are some of the most prominent features found on NVIDIA's graphic cards, therefore we anticipate finding them on the RTX 40 series GPUs as well. So what is the performance for the RTX 40 series? Since RTX 40 series cards won't be available for at least a few more months, we don't have much information on their performance yet. If the speculated core count is accurate, a card with the complete die might be able to deliver a performance boost of up to 76% in comparison to the RTX 3090. However, that is simply an estimate of the potential performance. Because of the many additional considerations involved, you should not anticipate an increase of 76% in the actual world. A Twitter account by the name of Copite7Kimmy, who has established himself as a reputable source for GPU leaks, has stated that GPUs may be able to achieve up to 100 teraflops of processing power when using the FP32 instruction set. It is essential to emphasize 
that this number results from entirely theoretical research. The same source also said that the RTX 4090 might have twice the performance of the RTX 3090. However, these assertions are supported by a second leaker known as Greymon55. According to the source who leaked the information, the RTX 40 series cards would have up to twice the performance of the RTX 30 series cards. However, this comes at a cost, as most power-hungry cards are said to require up to 500 watts of electricity to function properly. According to the rumors, there will be an overall boost of 2.2 times the existing GPU core. However, it is still too early to tell. We cannot predict how well the cards will perform after they are released, but the rumor mill indicates that there will be a significant jump in quality. It is also worth noting that Copite 7 Kimmy has asserted that the GPUs in the 40 series will not support PCI Express version 5.0, but will instead use the more established PCI Express version 4.0 inf interface. It is unclear at the moment whether or not this will give any apparent influence or performance yet. This information comes as a surprise given that Nvidia's Hopper GPUs for data centers will support PCI's 5.0. What's the power draw of the RTX 40 series? A significant improvement in performance is often accompanied by a rise in the required amount of power. There are also claims that the RTX 40 series cards will use more power than any other product that Nvidia has ever released. Although the precise amount of power needed by the cards is still unknown, numerous leakers have indicated that it will be substantial. Some leakers say it could require as much as 500 watts of energy. Moore's Law is Dead, a leaker, speculates that RTX 4090 would potentially require 600 watts of power. And that's just the reference card. Third party products might set an even higher standard to this. To put this into perspective, the RTX 3090 has the power need of 350 watts, while the minimum power supply unit NVIDIA recommends is 750 watts. Because this is the minimum suggestion, you should have a power supply that is at least 800 watts in order to run the RTX 3090. If the top card in the 40 series exceeds 500 or 600 watts of power consumption, you will probably require a power supply of at least 1000 watts. With its RTX 30 series graphics cards, Nvidia was able to break beyond the 250 watt barrier. In the past, not even the most powerful consumer cards exceeded 250 watts in power consumption. Above 300 watts is the minimum power need for the RTX 3080, RTX 3080 Ti, and the RTX 3090. The maximum power requirement for the RTX 30, 3090 Ti is 450 watts. The fact that the rumored power draw of the RTX 4090, which is 600 watts, represents a 33 increase over the power draw of the RTX 3090 Ti, implies that Nvidia isn't very worried about power constraints for the high-end models. There are rumors that Nvidia is even working on a cooling solution with three fans to keep the cards at a consistent temperature. There has been no confirmation of anything from Nvidia, and the power drain will likely decrease once the design has been finalized. However, gamers will likely need to invest in a new power supply for the high-end card. There you have it. Everything you need to know about Nvidia Geoforce RTX 40 series. Thanks for watching today's video. We encourage you to like, share, and subscribe to our channel. We constantly upload ed educational content and want you to be a part of the family. Have a nice day.